Hey game makers, Pixelated Pope here, and let's talk about cameras. The camera system in GMS2 is the cause of a lot of confusion. The goal of this video is to simplify cameras for you. If your project is 2D, if your project does not use split screen in any way, shape, or form, and has only one view, if you are not using split screen and you have more than one view, Tell me about it in the comments because I'd like to explain to you why you're wrong. So before we get into that, let's talk about what you should not be doing when you're using cameras in GMS2. First, don't use the room editor to set your views up. Don't set your port size, your, your view size, any of that. Object following is obviously right out. So don't do that. Second, don't use any of the variables with the word port in them. These, these variables are only usable when you're doing split screen stuff. They really shouldn't be messed with. Otherwise, I've yet to find a good reason to unless split screen is involved and you need to set up the positions of where your views are being displayed within your game window. Third, don't create cameras. You don't need to. There's a default camera in every single room that automatically gets created and cleaned up and everything. And you don't ever need to create cameras. You just use the default one and I'll show you how to do that. With that out of the way, let's just jump right into this. Let me show you what we have to begin with. Uh, I've already created a room with a camera, a player, and it's super tiny, but you know, there's nothing else going on here. I've just got a player who's going to represent what we want our camera to follow in our room. So object camera is completely empty right now. Let's set up a few things. In the create event, we need to decide on our ideal resolution. I go over this a lot in my resolution tutorial series, which I know a lot of you have already seen. If you really wanna do this hardcore for dynamic resolution scaling and pixel perfect scaling, that's where you want to go look. All of that can still be applied to this solution. I'm just going to keep things simple and say divide 1920 by 1080 by six. That's going to be my view size. Uh, I recommend you do this if you don't know what resolution to choose. The higher this number, the better. You'll scale to more resolutions perfectly. And the higher you need to multiply to scale, the less noticeable distortion will be. So this is a good way to start. All right, so now let's set our window scale. I've chosen to scale my window to three times the size of my view. This will make it bigger on the monitor and so I can actually see what's going on. It won't be super tiny. So let's go ahead and set that window size. So I've set my window size to the view size times the window scale. And now I need to actually center the, uh, the view on the monitor. Uh, I use alarm zero equals one. It has to happen one step after you set the window size. Otherwise, the new size will not be taken into account when you call window center. So over here in alarm zero, we just call window center. Next thing we wanna do is resize our application surface. Uh, the application surface will control how much of the pixels in our window we're actually using. Uh, the higher the number up to the size of the of the window, the more resolution you have to work with and the smoother things can scroll. But for purists who are building a purely retro game that should look like an old NES game or an old Super Nintendo game, you'll be breaking your pixel grid. Uh, and I personally don't think that's a big deal. Uh, but if you do, you got two options. Basically, you want to resize your application surface to either the size of the view or the size of the window. We're going to do the window. And that is it for our create event. Again, if you want to get more complicated, do dynamically sized views to match aspect ratio of your monitor, that's fine. Just follow what I talk about in my resolution and aspect ratio uh, tutorial and apply it here. You'll be fine. Uh, so the next step is we need to enable views in the room. Again, the goal, one of the goals here is we don't ever want to edit anything about our views in the room editor. So uh, with that in mind, we've made our camera object persistent and we're going to add a room start event so that every time we go into a new room, room start, our views are automatically enabled. So to do that, it's pretty easy. You gotta turn on views, views are enabled. 
And then you got to set your view visible. Since again, this is for somebody who is only using one view and isn't using split screen, we just are going to use view zero. So now view visible zero equals true. Perfect. And that's it. Now, whenever we start a new room, the camera will automatically enable these views and they'll be visible. But we aren't actually using the view yet. It's there, it's working, but we're not manipulating it ourselves. That we are going to do in the end step event. The reason we choose the end step event is we assume that in the step event is when you'll be moving the object that you want to base your camera's position on. So the player's X and Y position is being updated in the step event. And once it's finished moving, we can rely on this end step event taking place after that. You always want to position the camera after all movement has been completed. So we're going to do two things in the end step event. We're going to set the size of our view and we're going to set the position of our view in that order. That order is actually pretty important. So let's start with the size. But first, there's something we gotta do because it'll save us a lot of typing. Let's create a macro. Macro view, view camera zero. We're gonna be using view camera a lot. So let's just make it easier to type. We're just gonna call it view. So let's set the size of our view. And that's pretty much it. If you have zooming where your view changes size to either zoom in on something or zoom out to show more, you'd want to set that up here uh, and make sure you do that before you position the view. So let's talk about how we're going to position it. We need to center the view on the player. Let's explain how to center our camera on something first off. So this trips up a lot of beginners. So let's talk about how you center your camera on something. So let's pretend we have a room. And in that room, you have a view. And that's our view. And of course, we have the player, which we want to follow. I'm going to use a green dot. So the first thing you do is remember, whenever you're doing you know, maths in Game Maker, you're, especially with rectangles, you're almost always talking about the top left corner, right? Uh, in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and say you're always talking about the top left corner. So when we take the view and we put it on player X, player Y, we're essentially doing this. So that's not centered, obviously. The, that's gonna put the player in the top left corner of the screen. So how do we get it to be centered? Well, the view, we know it's width and we know it's height. And we know if we want it to be like right here, then we're gonna to have to know the half of the width and the half of the height. And then all we do is we take the view's position and we slide it halfway. So we subtract half the width and then we subtract half the height, and now it's centered in the view. We know that the player exists. Let's take the player's X position and uh, Y position, half the width, half the height, and subtract it from the player's position. And that's where our view is going to be placed. Our X position for our view is our player's position minus half the view width, and our player's Y position minus its view height. And that's where we want to set the view. So to do that, all we do is camera set view position. Again, we're going to pass it our view, which is view camera zero, and then our X and our Y. And let's run that and see what it looks like. All right, there we go. We got a nice 16 by nine view uh, end window. And there you go. So it's following in perfectly, but there's a couple problems. Uh, the view can, he's always centered, right? So we want to make sure that in this case, the view actually stays locked to the inside of the room. And it looks a little boring, doesn't it? It's just like right on him and it always is right in the, in the center perfectly. So let's fix that. So the first thing we need to do is clamp our positions. We want the X to always be in the room. But we were just talking about how we are always, when we're doing rectangle math in Game Maker, we're always talking about the top left corner. So we need the top left corner to not just stay in the room, but 
to stay in the room with enough room on the right so that the view doesn't move out of the room. Let's go back to our drawing to explain this. So if we've got a view and we're basing everything on the top left corner, here's our view and we don't want it to go outside of the room. So how do we do that? Well, if everything's based on the top left corner, if it's in the top left corner here, then the position of the view is zero, zero. So we never want it to be a negative number, simple enough. But if we were to say X and Y can't be greater than room width, room height, then that's gonna put it right here. So it'll go out of the room to the right and down. We don't want that. But it seems pretty obvious what we do need to do is subtract the width of the view and the height of the view. And now it'll stay perfectly in the room. So let's do that using clamp. So our X value is now clamp object player X view width divided by two. Zero, because we don't want it to be less than zero ever. And we don't ever want it to be less than or greater than room width minus view width. And we do the same thing for our Y, except we're using our height values. And that will lock the view to the room. Let's add a little bit of smoothing to the camera just to make it, just to give it a little bit of character. To do that, we need the view's current position. And we get it by using camera get view X and Y. And now you've probably seen this a bunch in other tutorials. So we're just gonna use lerp. We need a value for how fast our camera is gonna follow. Uh, I'm just gonna call that speed and say 0.1. The higher that number, the faster your camera will move. We move our camera set view position down here. All right, so we're setting our camera's position to the interpolated value between our current X and our target X by 10%. So let's see what that looks like. And there you have it. The camera follows our character, stays in the room, and as it approaches the character's position, it kind of slows down, which is pretty cool. It looks pretty nice. And that's it. GMS2 cameras, as simple as possible. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them below. Thanks to my wonderful patrons for helping me keep my channel ad free. And thanks for watching. Now go make something awesome.